Genuine poetry can communicate before it is understood. T.S. Eliot What is revision? Revision is the process of editing and improving a piece of writing. It can involve changing the text structure, content, style, and organization. Revision is essential in writing as it can help make writing more effective and clearer. When it comes to poetry, revision is key. No matter how great your poem is in its first draft, there's always room for improvement. Revision allows you to fine-tune your poem and make it the best it can be. There are a few things to keep in mind when revising your poem. First, read your poem out loud. This will help you catch any errors or awkward phrasing. Then take a step back and look at the overall structure of your poem. Is there anything you can add or remove to make it more effective? Finally, pay attention to the details, the words you choose, and how you arrange them on the page. A well-chosen word can make all the difference in a poem, and arranging your words carefully can create powerful effects that enhance the meaning of your words. When it comes time to revise your poetry, there are a few key things to look for. First, check the overall structure of your poem. Does it have a clear beginning, middle, and end? If not, consider revising the order of your lines or adding new transitions. Next, take a closer look at your choice of words. Are they precise and evocative? If not, try swapping them out for more accurate or vivid alternatives. Also, be sure to check for any spelling or grammatical errors. Finally, ask yourself if your poem's overall tone and mood are what you have intended. If not, see if there are any changes you can make to achieve the desired effect. When you write poetry, here are a few poetic elements to finesse the editing process. Shaping your poem, line breaks, stanzas, and pacing, sound and rhythm, making your words sing, images and symbols, creating visuals with language, truth and emotion, writing from the heart, regarding about shaping your poem with line breaks, stanzas, and pacing. All these elements play a role in how your poem will be read and interpreted by your audience, so it's essential to choose wisely. Line breaks can create a sense of rhythm or emphasize a specific syllable. They can be used to create visual interest on the page. Stanzas can be used to group related thoughts together or to develop a sense of pause. And finally, pacing refers to the overall speed at which your poem is read. It could be fast paced and energetic or slow and reflective. Experimenting is the best way to determine which line breaks, stanzas, and pacing will work best for your poem. Regarding about sound and rhythm with making your words sing. As a poet, you know the importance of sound and rhythm in your work. By now, you probably develop a good ear for what sounds right in your poems. But what if you need help with how to make your words sing? Here are a few tips to help you revise your poem for sound and rhythm. Read your poem out loud. This is the best way to hear how the words sound together. As you read, pay attention to how the words flow and their rhythms. Listen for areas where the rhythm breaks down or sounds choppy. These are areas that you want to revise. Experiment with different ways of saying things. Try changing up the order of words or substituting other words altogether. See how these changes affect the sound and rhythm of your poem. When you are satisfied with the sound and rhythm of your poem, read it out loud. Often, the way you hear a poem the second time differs from the first. You may see something that needs to be changed or that you missed the first time. Regarding about images and symbols with creating visuals with language, Images and symbols are an integral part of the poetry writing process. Poets can evoke emotion and create meaning in their work by creating visuals with language. For example, by using sensory images, poets can give readers a vivid picture of what they are experiencing. Using symbols, poets can add depth and layers of meaning from abstract imagery into concrete words. Both images and symbols are powerful tools to help poets create beautiful and moving poems. By carefully crafting their words, poets can create visuals that will stay with readers long after reading. Regarding about truth and emotion with writing from the heart. When writing from the heart and emotions play a big role. For some, writing is all about getting their feelings out there and putting them on paper. It's a way to express themselves and get everything off their chest. And for others, writing is more about the joy or challenges that come with life. But no matter the reason for writing, it will only be as effective if we are honest with our emotions. If we want to write from the heart, we must be truthful with our emotions. Don't hold back and don't try to sugarcoat anything. The more honest you are, the more impactful your writing will be. It might be difficult at first, but once we start, the words will start flowing out of us. Writing poetry from the soul will draw out a deeper meaning each time we write a poem. With these things in mind, you should be able to revise your poem in a way that makes it more effective and impactful. Poetry is language at its most distilled and most powerful. Read a dove. Example of the writing and revision process. Phase 1. 
Once you have the poem's idea, free write some content, identify its theme, curate a wordless, poetic form, and the structure and the way it will be told. Now it's time to add more details about the poem. The best way to describe a poem is to approach it like a blurb that captures its essence, helps you comprehend it from the reader's point of view, and clarifies your thoughts for phase two writing. The poem, A Great Loss, part one, in the book, The Cool and Warmth of Hearts, a Great Loss is a narrative poem written in free verse, and the poem's story in medias res is summarized as such. Something tragic happens between two lovers when the speaker does not find his lover at his bedside. The speaker does not see his lover and cannot remember why she left him alone when he woke up. So he worries that this concern would draw unnecessary attention and suspicion. His worry and reason for not being at his side makes him depressed. His thoughts spiral out of control into deeper misery and hopelessness as each minute devours him. Phase 2 In Phase 2, you will transform your free writing into poetic form through its style and elements. This step will be chaotic and playful as you experiment with word arrangement, removal of words or phrases, swapping similar words, line breaks, and whether to use end stops or end jam lines. In continuation of Phase 1, A Great Loss Part 1, the original version of this poem, sometime written a decade or more ago, started out with this piece. The one I love has vanished without a trace, as if she was vanished beyond the universe. Now my heart feels misplaced without her embrace, as it fed me with warmth, never knowing when my broken heart is ever going to be replaced. No one would never know how I felt inside, even though the impression on my face may show. And as my intentions let go, they may vision my action. Above all, they never knew how much I love her. As I endure her pondering wilt, I try to erase the pain she flown into me. But I cannot escape. She has lied to be with me forever. Why? Now I want to die, never having memories of her. My mind is so torn. I wish I had never been born. Now I drift to another world of complete blackness and lost composure. Therefore, I had nothing to compete with. So I shift into sleep and unsure to wake up from here. Now I'm fading away. Who's going to console my soul? Where would my heart depart off to? As this question stays hidden in Jose. I slowly laid into my eternal rest. My spirit will be nocturnal as I explored for more requests to replenish my form just to see the one I love again. I always remember a day in September, October, November, and even December. For those, the seasons we shared most. For giving a reason to say I dearly loved her. And even though my words are few, but my heart will always be true. And the poem developed into the version from prose to free verse. The one I love has vanished without a trace, vanished beyond this universe. I am in a state of distraught, unsure how to carry on. The warmth at my bedside is misplaced. Never knowing when the shattered glass will ever get replaced. No one can know she is gone. At first, they would sympathize, then involve the police. They would drown me with questions. Not long, they would mark me as a suspect. In no time, they would exercise my rights. Soon, I feel the neighbor's menacing eyes. It would drive me into further depression. The onset impression gone from their faces. I cannot alarm others with this grim situation. In good intentions, it's best to let go and not involve others. Let them envision my action with suspicion. I'll do what's right. I'll search the high heavens. I'll endure the savannah's smoldering wilt. I can't seem to put aside the loss. Why the hell did she not tell me how she felt? Did she not tell me how she felt? She lied to be at my side. Why? Now I wish to die. Dread, should I ruminate her kittenish face? Now the house has an empty space. My mind is torn. I wish I had never been born. Charon, here's a coin. Ferry us into the void. Therefore my atoms are not reanimated, for another poor soul is jaded with my troubling baggage. Throw me at the sea, this float in an endless drift, so I'll ship into slumber and never wake from this tumble sea drift. I'm fading away, it will console my soul. What does the heart depart? I raise question, but no one answers. I slouch to lay my head into eternal rest. My spirit wanders into the nocturnal forest. Can you take up my request to replenish my form? before the storm sets in. Leaves changing hue in September, temperature lowest in October, leaves brown in November, and temperature plummets in December. This would be a long winter. They often cite seasons as a sign of hope. Much into spring, the ground still covered in snow. For reasons unknown, scientists baffled by the phenomenon. Theologians shouting Armageddon, drifting in my blanket, snow mound cover. Few words humming along as the cold winter bridges on. After that, I felt confident with the form, rhyme schemes, line break, and stop line, 
enjambment, and diction I chose. I was ready for phase three, the many revisions I will undertake. Phase three. In phase three, you will continue to play and arrange words and more with scrutiny while reading aloud to listen to its meter and discover components that best represent it. The key is to return to a poem you've written with fresh eyes and take on an editor's perspective rather than seeing it as your creation you kept close at heart. Take a break from it and give yourself some time before engaging with it again. In the interim, write other poems, watch a movie, or play a video game. Then when you return to revise, here are some areas to explore. Keep finding the best words, refine imagery, get intimate with figurative language, literary devices, and poetic elements, listen to the pacing of lines with punctuation, is the poem's tone set in the right mood? Read out loud, line by line, of the entire poem with each revision. The difficulty in the revision phase is knowing when a poem is done. Right up to the few weeks before my book launch, I still made changes. I would clean up elements like plot, scenes, and character development in a novel or short story. However, poetic visual language makes it harder to discern what's final. That's the nature of writing poems. It gets better but hardly ever easier, and many great poems took years or even after the poet's death to see the light of day. Ultimately, just pay careful attention to how the poem progresses. Of course, an author can always release a second edition as they get better with the craft. A poem is never finished, only abandoned. Paul Valery Furthermore, I read the poem aloud several times, listening carefully to its meters, pace, homonym, homophones, and tone. I want to point out something about rhyme scheme and homonyms and homophones. In the former, the best way to determine if an end rhyme sounds forced is by reading out loud and listening for awkwardness in speech, then rewriting it until it sounds natural or removing it. As for the latter, homonyms or homophones, having a trusty dictionary and etymology source will help ensure you're using grammatically correct words. After several reading aloud sessions, I step back. I used to take time apart to come back and see new perspectives and apply any inspiration. I discovered until I reached the final free verse poem published in the book, The Cool and Wonderful Parts. Here it is. Here we go! The one I love vanished without a trace, vanished beyond this realm. I am in a state of distress, unsure how to bear forth and face the warmth at my bedside misplaced. Never knowing when the shattered glass will ever get replaced, no one must know of this, she is gone. At first, they will sympathize, then involve the police, then drown me with questions. Not long from now, they will mark me as a suspect. In no time, they will exercise my rights. Soon, I feel the neighbors' menacing eyes. It will drag me into further depression. The onset impression gone from their faces. I cannot alarm others with this grim situation. In good intentions, it's best to let go and not involve others. Let them envision my action with suspicion. I'll do what's right. I'll search the heavy moss. I'll endure the savannah's smoldering wilt. I can't seem to put aside the loss. Why the hell did she not tell me how she felt? She lay at my bedside, but why? While this dread hangs over me, I wish it to die. Should I ruminate her kittenish face? But the house has a hollow space. My mind is torn. I wish this dread had never been born. Charon, here's a coin, bury us into the void, and do not allow my atoms to reanimate, for another poor soul is jaded with my troubled soul. Cast me into the sea to float on an endless drift, so I'll ship into slumber, and never wake from this tumble sea drift. I'm fading away, who would console my soul? Where does the heart depart? I raise question, but no one imparts an answer. I slouch to lay my head into eternal rest, my spirit wandering into the nocturnal forest. Can you take up my request to replenish my form before the storm sets in? The leaf changes hue in September, temperature lowers in October, leaves brown in November, and temperature plummets in December. This would be a long, long winter. They often cite seasons as a sign of hope, but much into spring, the ground is still buried in snow. For reasons unknown, scientists baffled by the phenomenon, theologians shot in Armageddon, drifting in my blanket snowman cover, a few words coming along as the icy winter takes over. If you are someone who loves to read my entire poetry writing process with examples, then you can check out my free download where I provide the following. I provide the entire poetry writing process with an example poem published in my book, The Cool and Warmth of Hearts from Start to Finish. I provide this in several formats for free, such as a PDF and JPEG with an infographic. Lastly, the Google Doc template I use for every poem can be downloaded in other formats as well. 
So you can find the link in the description below, and I hope you enjoy it. The gist. Revision is an essential step in writing poetry. It allows poets to reflect on their work and make changes to improve their poems. Revision can be complex, but it is essential to creating a successful poem. By revising their work, poets can ensure that they are the best they can be. Good poetry happens in the editing process. A good poem is a contribution to reality. The world is never the same once a good poem has been added to it. A good poem helps to change the shape of the universe, helps to extend everyone's knowledge of himself and the world around him. Dylan Thomas From one poet to the next in your lifetime, you will grow as long as you are open to life and inner wisdom. As a writer, author, and poet, you will transcend your former self by looking forward to tomorrow and holding more potential than yesterday. The best thing someone can do is to set a deadline for publication to free themselves from the bonds of perfectionism and let go of the poems for the world to read. In your next writing project, you can pause and reflect by revisiting old works and see how much you have grown and how much your work has grown and instilled value in readers' lives.